Hello friends, welcome again. Friends, in this video lecture, today we are going to discuss the groups of poets as found in English literature. Friends, when we make a whole survey of the whole history of English literature beginning from the 16th century till 19th century, we come across several groups of poets you know who write poetry which is different from other poets of their times they stand out from others right and that's why uh, the critics and the historians and the scholars of english literature they have given some separate names to these groups of poets friends Chronologically, starting from the 17th century or 16th century till 19th century, we come across these seven groups of poets in English literature. They are metaphysical poets, means metaphysical school of poetry uh, found in the beginning of the 17th century as well as Spenserian poets again found in the beginning of the 17th century and the Cavalier poets again in the same 17th century. But when we move to the 18th century, we have another group of poets known as churchyard poets or known as graveyard school of poets during the 18th century. And when we come to the 19th century, we have first generation romantic poets, second generation romantic poets and the pre-Raphaelite poets. So friends, one by one, let's start the discussion of these different schools of poetry found in English literature. We will discuss their main characteristics of these, school, these groups of poets and also we will also have a look at the major poets of each and every school of poetry. So friends, let's begin. The first school of poetry which, which brings about the charm and beauty in English poetry is the metaphysical school of poetry. Friends, we know that if you examine the literature of the 16th century, the romantic literature or the romantic poetry written during the Elizabethan age, okay? At the end of Elizabethan age, that means in the beginning of the 17th century, there was a sharp reaction against the romantic poetry of William Shakespeare, you know, and that reaction later on known, was known as metaphysical poetry, okay? These metaphysical school of poets, you know, they used much use, that you, you find much use of conceits in their poetry. Conceit means the comparison, but, you know, incomparable things are compared. Far-fetched images are found in uh, such metaphysical poetry. Moreover, these metaphysical poets, they made use of paradoxes. Okay, paradoxes means uh, the words, contrasting words are used together, put together in their lines, in their poetry. Moreover, you know, this metaphysical school of poetry, it appeals our intellect and not the heart. Okay, so this is the basic difference between metaphysical poetry and romantic poetry of the Elizabethan age. Okay, romantic poetry of the Elizabethan age appeals to our emotions, appeals to our hearts. But on the other hand, metaphysical poetry of John Donne and so many others, you know, they appeal our intellect. Why? Because they are full of wit. Okay, wit means the use of intelligence, right? So, uh, and uh, not only this, you also find much pomp and show of language and learning of these poets. The metaphysical poets, they used highly phraseological language, you know, in order to show 
that they were great scholars in their field. A argumentative style and abrupt beginning are also important features of metaphysical poetry. If I talk about the major metaphysical poets, then I must first of all name John Donne. Why? Because John Donne was the pioneer, was the founder of this metaphysical school of poetry in the beginning of the 17th century. John Dryden, who lived during at the end of the 17th century, he was the first person, he was the first scholar to call John Donne as a metaphysical poet. Okay? Along with John Donne, there were some few writers like Andrew Marvel, Richard Cresho, George Herbert, Abraham Cowley, Thomas Trahan. These were the outstanding metaphysical poets who were writing this kind of poetry during the 17th century. Let's move ahead to discuss the second group of poets known as Spenserian school of poets. Friends, we all have heard the name of Edmund Spencer. Edmund Spencer was an outstanding poet of the Elizabethan age of the 16th century. Okay, but after Spencer, there were some poets during the 17th century, you know, who loved Edmund Spencer's poetry. They tried to imitate the style and subject matter of Spencer in the beginning of the 17th century. And because they tried to imitate Edmund Spencer, that's why these poets of the 17th century, they were known as Spenserian poets and uh, their poetry is known as Spenserian school of poetry. Okay, these poets, you know, they wrote poetry in Spenserian stanza, which was first innovated by Edmund Spencer during the Elizabethan age. Okay, their poetry consists of eight iambic pentameter lines, followed by the ninth line of six iambic uh, feet, okay, which is known as Alexandrine. The line with six iambic feet is known as Alexandrian. So they followed the Spenserian style of writing poetry, okay, and mostly, you know, in, in Spencer's poetry, you find the element of uh, allegory, the pastoral element is found in the same manner the writers, the poets who were writing such poetry during the 17th century, they imitated this subject matter and style. Their poetry is also pastoral. Pastoral poetry means they uh, wrote about the life of the shepherds, the life of the village people, okay? And their poetry was full of allegory also. So that's why they were known as Spenserian school of poets. So, if I talk about the major Spenserian poets, then we have Phineas Fletcher, okay, who has written this poem, The Purple Island. This is a Spenserian poetry, right? Giles Fletcher, his poem, Christ's Victory and Triumph in Heaven and Earth over, over and After Death. You know, this poetry is also written in the style and fashion of Edmund Spencer. Apart from uh, Giles Fletcher and Phineas Fletcher, we have William Brown, George Wither and William Drummond. They were also important Spenserian poets of the 17th century. The third group is known as Cavalier School of Poetry. These Cavalier poets, you know, they were, they made a group which is known as a school of English poets of the 17th century. They supported King Charles I during the English Civil War from 1642 to 1651, okay? 
the most common characteristics of this cavalier poetry you know they exhibit they exhibited love for beauty you know love for nature much sensuality drinking good fellowship honor respect and social life these were some common characteristics found among the cavalier poets okay these poets opposed the metaphysical poetry you know it is action and reaction 16th century romantic poetry of of william shakespeare 17th century the metaphysical poetry of john donne which was a reaction against the romantic poetry of william shakespeare but this third group cavalier poetry this cavalier poetry was again a reaction against the metaphysical school of poetry okay why because their poetry was very simple cavalier poetry is simple and easy to understand for the common readers they wrote very short poems refined verses okay and the tone of this cavalier poetry was very easy going in comparison to the metaphysical poets okay if i talk about the major cavalier poets you know then the best known of best best known of the cavalier poets are robert herrick richard loveless and thomas carew okay also you can take john, sir john suckling these were the important cavalier poets the fourth group is known as graveyard school of poetry it is also known as churchyard poetry during the 18th century this poetry as the name itself implies you know graveyard or churchyard why why they are known as graveyard or churchyard poets why because their poetry is full of grief suffering sorrow gloom and death okay mostly they have written elegies right elegies full of sorrow full of mourning coffins and skulls they were generally found in the setting of the graveyard poetry they are also known as the precursors of gadic style of writing in english literature we know that during the 18th century gadic novels or gadic literature became popular but the roots of this gadic element in literature are found in these graveyard poets thomas gray is considered as the most important the most outstanding graveyard poet of the 18th century century elegy written in a country churchyard which was published in 1751 you know after his friend's death richard west you know he wrote this poem to mourn the death of his friend richard west this poem this elegy is considered as a nice example of graveyard poetry major poets of this school of poetry were thomas gray as i told you just now thomas parnell robert blair and edward young if you want some examples you can see here on the screen thomas parnell has written a night piece on death robert blair's poem the grave and edward young's poem the night thoughts these are more examples of graveyard poetry in english literature the next group of poets which is again very popular among the lovers of english literature is the first generation romantic poets or first generation romantic poetry okay they were these poets at the end of 18th century okay they were mainly inspired by the french revolution friends if you have read the history of uh, europe then french revolution is considered as an important landmark in the history of england and also in the history of europe the publication of lyrical ballads by william wordsworth 
and St. College in 1798 is considered as the beginning of a new era of romanticism okay and that's why you know and this this new era was actually a reaction against the neo classicism of the augustan age or the age of pop of the 18th century the whole 18th century is a period of reason it is a period of satire it is the period of realism but towards the end of 18th century there was a reaction in the hands of william wordsworth and st college who published lyrical ballads and they heralded a new age in english literature which is known as romantic revival which is known as the period of romanticism okay these poets wordsworth college and others william blake these three poets are known as the first generation romantic poets they loved freedom from rule okay they wanted freedom from bondages they loved nature spirit of individualism and independence these things are found in their poetry love for nature and love for rustic life love for the villages love for simplicity of life this is the important characteristic of the first generation romantic poets so wordsworth college and william blake these are the three first generation romantic poets if i talk about the second generation romantic poetry you know then this poetry was actually was not much different from the first generation romantic poets okay this movement actually enhanced the spirit of romanticism which was began which began uh in 1798 in the hands of wordsworth and college and william blake okay the same spirit was enhanced by some other group of poets you know which is known as the second generation romantic poetry mostly in their poetry we find gadic elements love for past love for medieval ages okay so ancient castles and all such things are presented in the second generation english second generation romantic poetry supernaturalism is also explicit in such poetry p b shelley percy b c shelley john keats and lord byron they were the three major second generation romantic poets okay and so this second generation romantic poetry comes to the end in 1830 1830 onwards you know during the victorian era we have during the 19th century we have another group of poets which is known as pre raphaelite school of poetry and d g rossetti was the leader of this movement pre raphaelite poetry during the 19th century okay these group this group of artists formed in england in actually in 1848 to restore the artistic principles and practices regarded as characteristic of italian art before raphael friends try to understand raphael was an italian painter and before raphael's time the kind of art the kind of paintings which were popular before raphael in italy this kind of painting was imitated by some poets and by some painters of england during the 19th century and that's why they are known as pre raphaelite poets okay they believed these poets believed in the theory of art for art's sake they did not believe that poetry teaches some moral lessons to the readers they did not believe that poetry pleases or entertains the readers these people these artists these painters and poets of pre raphaelite school of poetry they believed that art is for nobody's sake 
Art is for one's own sake. Art is for art's sake. Okay, because this poetry was inspired by painting. That's why this kind of poetry is full of pictorial elements. Okay, moreover, uh, this poetry is full of visual imagery. I mean. the imagery visual imagery some words are used in such a way that the whole picture comes before the eyes before the mental eyes of the readers when the readers read this pre raphaelite poetry okay music was also an important characteristic of pre raphaelite poetry if i talk about some major pre raphaelite poets then the first name name dg rossetti must be remembered why because he was the founder of pioneer of pre raphaelite poetry and this poem the blast damsel written by rossetti is considered as a magnum opus it is considered as a masterpiece of pre raphaelite poetry other poets like william holman hunt william morris ac swinburne john avet Millais. These were some important pre-Raphaelite poets of the 19th century. Okay, Robert Buchanan called these poets as flashy poets. He called such poetry as flashy school of poetry. Why flashy? Because it appeals our five senses. Okay, that's why you know pre-Raphaelite poetry is also known as classy school of poetry so friends all in all we have discussed these seven groups of poets which are uh, remembered in english literature as separate separate groups which are different from their times okay so please remember these seven groups and their contribution friends if you really liked this video please share it among your friends so that others can be benefited and also please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon thank you thank you very much